I just had a report up from the duty inspector. Uh, apparently on Sunday, um, uh, Robin Cook was in, in touch uh, um, um, from, a, from, a, from a, a film company. I said, yes. You've been contacting the film company. I said, well, what's the problem? Well, I don't like the way you things you are doing. Well, seeing I just cracked his case for him, um, to put it mildly, I was not very happy. So I said, right, what is the problem? If you don't want me to say things or do things, or if it's not, you know, in your interest, that or you want me to keep quiet about certain things. Oh, oh, I've got to go now. And with that, that was the last I heard or saw of our friend, Mr. DCI, Joel Smith. Not even a bloody thank you for cracking his case for him. Anyway, the fraud's still all going on. And anyway, I had then had an incident when someone threw a bloody great rock at my back bedroom window uh, about two o'clock in the morning. Now, you obviously have to see the location of my place, but if someone's going to throw a stone at my building at two o'clock in the morning, they would do it from the footpath on the main road, which would mean the front flat, or if they were going to simply throw one at my flat, they would do it from the footpath on the green on the other side. Well, at that time, the field next door was really high in brambles, and by high in brambles, I mean no drunk, no yobbo was going to push his way through all these brambles to get in a position to throw a brick from this empty field next door to me at my window. Anyway, then I've heard these other noises about half an hour later, and uh, next thing I know is the bloody place is being bombarded with oranges. And they're rolling off the roof and landing outside of my bedroom window and all the rest of it. Well, whoever was doing it was in, at that time, long grass, but of course, not being stupid, um, I wasn't going to go and stick my head out there, and also I didn't have a security line outside the building at the time. But I reported it to the police, and I had two uniformed officers turn up from New Haven, and I showed them the situation, and I'm no bloody fool, I can tell them someone was trying to get me out of the building, or stick my head out the side of it, or whatever. Um, and they mentioned that they had to report this back to a DS Whitfield. And I said, who's he? And they said, I suppose he must be sort of witness protection or something. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, I think next day Slave was kicking around. And by this time, uh, Danny Smith and Samuel Bennett alias uh, Mark Thomas, real name Wayne Smythe, were upstairs creating hell, supposedly decorating the flat, trying to flood us out. Uh, so that was a part of Slade, the other part of the gang were there. Anyway, I got a call from one of my investigators who told me that he'd had a D.S. Whitfield poking around. And he said to me, I'm suspicious of him. I said, well, in what way? I said, what was he investigating? No, he said, he was trying to find out who my informant was and who passed pass the information on to me. He 
you say, no, normally it's just in a case like this we get a, a letter or some form of identification. He says, and I was very suspicious of him from the start. So I thought, well, I'm not telling him any. Anyway, then I discover about a couple of days later from another investigator that, yes again, Mr Whitfield has appeared on the scene, not interested in the fraud, but who the informant is. Now, the main thing is, he was obviously trying to find out who it was and who he covered up. So I thought, right, I'll phone this creep up, I won't tell him who I am, and uh, what, and see what he says. So I phoned him up. He says, oh yes, he says, um, someone's uh, been on to everybody about this case and this, that and the other. He says, we could meet, he says, you know, I, I don't have to know who you are and all this old rubbish, you know, meet anywhere you like. And I thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to meet you and get bloody threatened. So anyway, I left him floating. Anyway, um, out of blue, I receive a phone call. I suppose we were so later from Miss Whitfield saying, Oh, I'd like to come as, would you like to come to Brighton Police Station and discuss uh, day and night? I thought, well, I'm not going to no bloody police station, so I made an excuse and said, Well, suppose you come home on Sunday afternoon. And then I arranged to have some witnesses here. And Whitfield turned up. Now, I'd actually posted off my official complaint against Bates and Hastings to Mr Whitehouse, so I had a copy sitting on the side. Anyway, Whitfield turned up, he was totally hostile, I don't know, I don't mean he came in and said, oh hi, you know, and shake hands and smile or whatever, and, um, you know, and I said, oh yes, I, this is my neighbour Mr Cox, so he went charging across to Mr Cox, I thought for a minute he was going to hit him. Um, he was purely intimidating. Do I want to report a crime? I asked, pardon? Do I want to report a crime? I says, what about? Day and night. I said, before you say any more, I said, and I handed him the copy of the letter. Anyway, I then turned around to Pollard and I said, what about my, I'm still waiting for my copy of my three statements. Oh, he says, you, you only made two statements. I thought, here we go again. They're covering up. So I thought at the moment, I'm not going to start going to this, but, you know, that's good enough for me. Uh, so this Whitfield character still keeps trying on, do I want to report a crime? Well, let's be honest, the crime's already been bloody reported. And uh, someone had sent him and Pollard down to try to see, I don't know what the hell they were playing at, but they definitely were trying to cover up John. Well, that is it really. I haven't seen the murder squad in any shape or form since. Um, that's about it really. Then my informants tell me that they had reported to New Haven Police um, asking for information that whether they've been done and about Mr Slade and Wallowitz gang and on record is one person being told it was a civil matter, another saying they'd never heard of Wallowitz. Uh, and 
how many others got in touch and were given different excuses is unknown, but an investigation into each and every company will show exactly who contacted who about what and why.